Hello friends, welcome to Garnier Creekside. I am Jenny and today it is a nice kind of cloudy cool day in the beginning of March and I'm going to take this opportunity to go ahead and start some vegetable seeds both outside in the garden box and I'm going to start a second round of my warm weather vegetables indoors. I've already started one round and I'm going to start another round of those warm season plants like my tomatoes, peppers, um, basil, that kind of thing. So I will show you that to you in just a minute because we've got some fun ones that we are going to start. But first we are going to start outside because we are here at the garden boxes. If you remember, we have this space of five garden boxes. I have them all behind me here in the middle one. I think you can see behind me basically is my herb box. I keep um, my perennial herbs in there and then two of them are currently empty. I know that I'm going to put potatoes in one of them and then I'll probably save the other one for my early, some of my earliest warm weather crops if that makes any sense. And then behind me you can see my um, garlic that we planted this fall. So let's look at the garlic right quick and then of course the empty bed that we're going to plant some carrots and lettuce in today. So here we have the um, stiff neck garlic that I planted this fall and it is doing quite well, quite happy. I have literally done nothing to it. I have let the good Lord water it with the rain and they are doing just really well. I don't have my scapes yet. So remember with the hard uh, stiff necks, you need to take those off. I don't have them yet. So they are just fine how they are. And then can you see those cheery little jonquils um, up there on the bank? We got them planted, of course, this fall and they are very happy. And I think you'll be happy to see that I finally got my unique stone bench fixed correctly. All right, so we are going to plant. I have, um, get my tools here. All right, we are going to plant the all-star gourmet lettuce mix from Johnny Select Seeds. I love this company. If you're ever in doubt of where to buy seeds from, um, this is where we first started buying our seeds. Love them. I have done this mix many, many times and it is wonderful. So it is just a blend. You can cut it either as, you know, um, baby leaves or you can go ahead and cut them as matures. I just sprinkle them in here so I will have a nice solid row. That way when I want my lettuce, I can just come out here and just snip the leaves off and they'll continue to regrow. So if, and if you plant lettuce, I believe they say it's like every, yeah, you can begin harvest in about three weeks depending on the weather. Now, of course, here we are in March, so it may not be quite as quick as three weeks. Um, but if you sow your lettuce every two weeks, then you're going to have a beautiful continuous supply of your lettuce for, you know, as long as you keep sowing it. So it will do really well. So we're going to do that. And then I have four different um, packages of seeds of carrot carrot seeds rather from John Sheepers the kitchen garden seeds they have I get all my seeds from either Johnny's or the kitchen garden seeds because they both between the two of them have really fun um, unique varieties that taste really well um, they perform well and I like to do things that are kind of unique and different so between the two of them I have got my odd uh, food covered very well. So what we're going to do here is we are doing the Scarlet, uh, and I may be butchering these names, just forgive me, Scarlet Nantes, which is um, a beautiful one. Then we have the Yaya's Fun Black Nebula. I mean, look at the color of these guys. So much fun. And then, because you gotta, I mean, make it fun, folks, we're going to do the Rainbow Carrot Mixture. So I have got four different packets. We are going to make all four carrot seeds and the lettuce fit in here. We're going to put them in pretty tight and snug. That way I don't have to um, worry about using too many boxes and just make the most of my space. Now, if you will remember back in the fall, I always cover, or at least the last two years, I have covered my garden boxes with um, chopped up leaf litter. And I want to show you the difference that it has made in simply the weed control. So in this bed, I have one, two, three, four, like five very small weeds that are in this garden box that we're getting ready to, to plant in, as opposed 
to <laughs> the gravel that is surrounding these beds are pretty covered in weeds right now. And so I've got to get in here and clean them out. Yes, there is landscape fabric underneath these rocks. So that way the rocks don't soak down into our native soil. But that just shows you that landscape fabric does not prevent weeds from growing. They just simply grow on top of it. So a great way to control your weeds is put a nice thick layer of your leaf litter down and that will really help suppress the weeds. So without further ado, um, we're gonna go ahead and make our rows. I have two tools that I'm gonna use, well, actually three tools that I'm gonna use. Let me show them to you. So first, to pull my leaf litter back, I'm gonna use this great rake that I got from um, Kinsman. So this came from Kinsman Garden Company. It's perfect because it can reach in there and I'm just gonna pull back my leaf litter and then sow my seeds and then push it back in there. So I've got my little handy dandy rake. Then I've got my Cobra. I have, I believe, shown you this Cobra before. This thing is great because I can make rows with it very easily and it's great for um, weeding because you can really get down there and pop those weeds out. Here it's not going to be that big of a deal because they're pretty easy to get out of. Mainly going to be using this to make my rows. Let's see. Can you see it? So it has that great hook to it and then on the end it has a flat end. Hence like, a, like the back of the cobra's head. It's great. And then uh, we got this years ago from Johnny's. I'm sure you can get them at other places too. Um, let's see if I can show it to you. All right, so what it is, is it's a way to easily put down seeds that are very fine because carrot seeds and lettuce seeds are very small. They're not large, like say like a sunflower seed. So what you do is you put your seeds in here and then you've got this top that has different numbers. And with those different numbers, there's holes around the edge. So like a number one is a very, very small little opening as opposed to a number, what's the highest number? A number five, which has a really large opening. This just helps control the flow of seeds. So I'll put it down and I'll tap it or gently shake it and that way <laughs> all my lettuce seeds don't end up in one big pile or my carrots and I can just evenly sprinkle them out. It helps kind of control that rate of how fast the seeds go down. Um, so we have found that this has been quite handy. We've used this for, I mean, this is probably older than Jackson. We've had it that long. Um, so it is fantastic. So without further ado, I am going to start making my rows. All right, so I pulled back my leaves and I went ahead and made two rows. Obviously I'm gonna have a total of five rows because I have the one lettuce and then the four carrots that are gonna go in here. It's gonna be nice and snug and that's okay. Um, so lettuce leaves, lettuce leaves, lettuce seeds are very small. So this is a great way to use my little seed spreader starter router. Now, if you get your seeds from a really good, reputable seed company, they're going to tell you exactly what your spacing is going to be, um, how deep you need to plant them. All that information should be on the back of your container, your little seed packet. If it's not, look on the website um, because depending on what the seed is will depend on how far apart you space them, um, how deep you're going to plant them, and all of that information. I am going to go on a number two hole for these lettuce seeds. That should give me good coverage of them. Um, so we're going to put that down. So this lettuce is going to be only, um, let me find it here. Okay, so it says, so in two to four inch wide bands, roughly a half inch apart. Mine are gonna be a lot closer than a half inch apart. And about 60 seeds will, 60 seeds will cover a foot, cover very lightly, about one eighth and as far as down. So they're really gonna be on the surface. So I'm just gonna barely move the soil back. And then when we're done, put my um, leaf litter back on top of that. So that is what the lettuce will do. And this is a, um, let's see how big was this package i think it wasn't was it an ounce and so there are a ton of seeds in here so this will last me all season long i'm not even going to use all of what is in here 
Um, so you just basically just go and just shake it. You can shake or you can tap whatever your method is and you're just spraying cleaning them. There we go. Once you get the flow going, sometimes tapping I find works a little bit better. Now, of course, do you have to have this? No, you don't have to have this. You can just put them in your hand and sprinkle them down with your fingers. So I said tap, but guess what? Seems to be working a little bit better by the shaking method. Now, I would recommend that you try to time your seed starting outdoors. Oh, no, lid came up. Here we go. A little bit with your weather. So what do I mean by that? Well, obviously you have to wait until the temperatures are correct, you know? Um, so here we are, early March in North Carolina. We have already had some quite warm days, but we're also gonna have some cool nights. And that's okay, this is perfect for these crops because they are cool weather crops. Um, but what I really mean is last night, we got some good rain, had a, a system come through, had a good bit of rain, and then for the next three days, it is going to rain. So these seeds, one, are already going in to some really damp, moist soil. Then, when I put this leaf litter back on top of it, it helps hold the moisture into the soil. Then we're gonna get three days of rain. Man, these things are gonna just do great because then the temperatures come back up and they are gonna just pop up and be very happy. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do, and I've got one more row made already, so we're gonna put a carrot in there. And let's see, we'll just pick the first one, the rainbow carrot mixture. Um, so these are going to be a fourth of an inch deep um, and days of germination is 14, 21 days. My germination temperature is between 45 and 85 degrees. So that's perfect. So we're gonna get those. And I kind of like to make these two rows and then cover them. Let's see. I tend to over sow because you don't always know exactly what your germination rate is going to be because you can always come back in and thin your seeds out. So if you've got too many seeds, you can always thin them. That's not that big of a deal. Now on the carrots, I might go up to a number three. They're just a little bit bigger. You got to hold your mouth just right to get this lid to go back on. There we go. All right. All right, here we go. So this is, oh, and I do have tags. I need to label this stuff before I forget. I get too ahead of myself. All right, so this is the rainbow mixture. Before I get any further, y'all know how I am. I get so excited I forget what I'm doing. Um, I need to, I've got these little wooden stakes. I got these, I believe, from Gardener Supply when I was ordering some other things. But you can get these little wooden stakes, these little name tags from anywhere. Um, and then because of the nursery, this is a garden art line garden marker. Um, so it's UV proof, weather proof, um, and it won't fade. So all star lettuce. And then the name and then today's date. And then I put that, of course, there at the head. But these little things are great. I love these little seeds. And then that was rainbow mixture. And then I just simply come back in and just very lightly cover. We try to use as much um, with our vegetables and our food products, be as absolutely organic as possible. Um, so all of our, our soil here is, is organic. I use the land and sea compost. I use, um, of course, the leaf litter, which is <laughs> very organic. Um, I'll use the Espoma Tones, which is a organic solution. So everything here on the, flat, on the garden boxes, I try to be as organic as possible. I may not always use organic seeds, um, but the real source of the pesticides is the, um, is, is of course the soil and then what products you use. All right, so we have that. So now we're going to bring back this and work on that side of the bed. I got three more rows of carrots. So I'm just gonna have the um, 
Same method, I'm gonna bring that leaf litter over here. We're gonna be playing back and forth. I'm gonna get three rows made, three rows of carrots put in, and then we can get some really warm weather seeds started. Cannot wait to show you these. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun, and I have a fun, unique container that I think you're gonna be really excited about. Um, so, hang on a second, let's plant some carrots. Okay, friends, so we have got the lettuce and the four different carrots planted. I will say that this type of vegetable gardening um, is really, really adaptable. You don't have to have, a, you know, a big garden box dedicated to growing some vegetables. Maybe you're, you live in the inner city like my sister does. She only has a balcony. You can so do this in containers um, and lettuce, carrots, all that kind of stuff does really, really well in container gardening. I know Laura has done a lot here recently, like within her greenhouse on using containers with vegetable gardening. So don't be intimidated and think, oh, well, I don't have a whole garden plot or I don't have garden boxes. I can't do that. Yes, you can. Um, just do it on a little bit of a different scale in a different way, um, but you totally can do that. So don't let your space dictate what you can and cannot do. And maybe you don't have any kind of outdoor facility at all. Maybe you really are in an apartment and you don't have an, um, a balcony even to grow things on. You can get some grow lights. There are tons of different styles of grow lights available from just, you know, the big three-tier stand or you can get something that fits up underneath your counter. Just tons of options are out there. So if where there's a will, there is a way. So if you want to have some vegetables, your own, maybe an herb garden, you can totally do that. Just go and explore your options. Of course, Gardener Supply is a great option um, for the different types of grow lights and grow systems. In fact, that is what I have. Um, I think Laura and I have the same one. I had, of course, seen hers that she has in her studio, the three-tier system. And when Jerry and I were talking about doing this, he said, well, let's just, you know, I know that you're going to have lots of seeds going, so let's just go ahead and get the three-tiered. And we stuck it in the schoolroom because that just makes the most sense for us as far as space goes. And it has done great. I have started um, some zinnia seeds and marigolds and then... Um, I, put the, I went ahead and tried like some Swiss chard, kale, broccoli. We're not big broccoli people, but I was like, yeah, I got the seeds. Let's just go for it. And then, of course, the tomatoes and my jalapenos. Um, so lots of fun things. So I started those probably a month ago. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start a second round of those warm season um, vegetables that really, if you want to get them kind of in a timely fashion, you want to start them indoors. Obviously, once the weather turns, you can direct sow them. You're just gonna get them much later than if you had started them inside. So let me get all my things set up and then I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna start today. And I have some fun new pots that I wanna show you. So the seeds that we are going to start today for our indoor are all from Proven Winners. Proven Winners, a couple of years ago, started doing some um, tomato seeds and, and different ones. And so we are going to use those today to start indoors. We, um, here at the nursery, we have typically bought them um, as like finished product, right? We buy the tomato plants and everything as liners. Uh, this year, Proven Winners sent us some to start as seeds. And what's really fun is they have a new 
Um, they're called eco pots. These are the seed starting pots. They are nice and small. They're coming in a six pack. Um, but the really fun thing about these containers, these little pots, is that they are 100% completely plastic free. I know that that has been like a big concern in the horticultural world and with gardeners is that there is a lot of plastics that get used in this industry. Um, and so these are, um, these little containers will eventually break down and turn into compost and they have food, they have nutrients inside the container itself so that as your little seedlings are growing that they will be fed from the container it itself. It is really cool. So when you order these, Proven Winners will send you a little, um, information so it says um, i'm just gonna read it to you so the seed starting eco pots do not contain any plastics and are 100 percent um, compostable they are made to be sturdy enough for shipping storing and planting so as opposed to like peat pots that are really fragile and can um, fall apart into your hand these feel like plastic they are not plastic so they are nice and sturdy um, so if you can hear them right? It sounds like plastic, but they are not. Um, so that this means that even after being planted for a season or two, they may not be fully decomposed. This is not going to decompose in one season. It is going to take some time. Um, however, they're full of nutrients, thus safe to be compo composted or tilled up into your garden. So if you have, you know, out in, in a field of a garden and you have a tiller, you can easily, you know, just have these in there and it'll, you know, break it up and they will decompose. Or if you don't want to leave them, like I'm not going to plant this directly into my garden boxes, but I can throw it into my, um, our area where we put all of our kind of our green material that has spent. And I know that these will break down. So, or if you want to, just throw them in your trash can because they're going to break down in the landfill. So this is something that's really neat from Proven Winners. Um, and you can order them straight off of their website along with the seeds that I'm going to use here in a minute. Now, to start your seeds indoors, you're going to want to start with um, a seedling mix. So go to your local garden center or a big box store and get um, soil that is for seed germination because it's a lot finer it doesn't have as much chunky material in it so this is black gold i really like this it's nice and fine i've started all my um, seeds in there and then i have a tub because this mixture is going to be very very dry and i want to add some water to it because i don't want my pots to be full of just plain dry material and i just realized i forgot something to open this with hey, i need some scissors there's not a rip hole. Hold on, be right back. All right, grab my little snips. Even though I have the grow lights that are inside, <laughs> I learned really quickly that putting soil in pots indoors can get quite messy. So even though we're gonna move these inside, I am gonna pot them up outside. So it's just kind of like um, if you make biscuits, you have to, you know, figure out exactly how much moisture you need in your, with your flour ratio, right? Well, it's kind of the same thing with the, um, with this soil. So you, you add some water, you stir it around, you add some more water. I don't want it sopping wet, but I want it to um, hold its form just a little bit better than that. All right, now we're ready to go. So I just have my little, this is the, um, the little plastic tray is like the, the dome. So all I'm gonna do is just really quickly take my soil, fill it up, into my pot make sure it's you don't want it super pressed down but you you know you don't want it loose and i'm going to fill up my little tray all 
right, so I have all of my little pots filled and we are gonna go ahead and start planting them. So I have a total of three tomatoes. I have got the um, Garden Gem, Bellini, and Garden Treasure. We'll talk about them when we do them. Then we have the Pesto, Besto, Basil, and then the Fire, hot, fire Away, Hot and Heavy Pepper. Um, so we have, like I've, I think I told you earlier, we have had the um, two of the tomato plants. We have not had the Bellini, but we've had the Garden Treasure and the Garden Gem, and we have had the Hot and Heavy Pepper, which is so much fun because um, basically it, it changes colors as the peppers mature and ripen, and as they ripen, their uh, heat level will change. <gasps> Look at this! Clearly, I had not opened up the, um, the seed packets because they give you a little, um, a little plant tag, and I had already made mine. Oh, I love that. That's a fun little surprise. Uh, so we'll put it in the front. I'd already made them, so we'll put them in the, in, one in the front and one in the back. Now, there are, um, when you order your seeds from Proven Winners, they're going to send you, of course, the information, like I told you before, is going to be on the back of the packet which is very helpful but they're also going to give you a sheet that lists all these little tips for germinating your seeds so with your um your hot and heavies they are going to take about 7 to 21 days to germinate we're going to plant them only at an eighth of an inch the, nope a fourth of an inch deep um, basically you're just covering them with the soil and there are 15 seeds per um for this. So what I am going to do is just use my little um, snips to kind of move the soil back a little bit to make a little room here. And then, like I told you earlier, I like to plant multiple seeds at a time because sometimes, you know, life just happens and some seeds just do not germinate and that is okay. Um, so we, we plan for that and plant a little extra with those. So basically I have four pots here. And I'm just going to drop, you know, about four pepper seeds in a pot. Don't overthink this, y'all. It is not, it's not meant to be stressful. It's meant to be fun. Um, and then once your seeds begin to germinate, then you can go in and thin out the little thin ones, the little small ones. And of course, you want to leave your your biggest healthiest ones. So once you have them down in the ground, in the soil, you're just gonna kind of come back with your finger and just lightly cover them up, tap them in, easy peasy. Seeds are a lot tougher than what we give them credit for. If they weren't, we wouldn't have as many plants as we do on this planet, now would we? Get on my little soapbox here. All right, next is Bellini. So Bellini is going to be a little cocktail tomato. And it is, hence the name, right? Haha, <laughs> Bellini cocktail tomato. Um, it's gonna be a beautiful orange one. Um, I love that they give us these little plant tags. So much fun. Uh, it is going to be an eighth of an inch deep. Again, so we're just barely covering them. Um, six to 14 days for germination super easy and i like too that they come in these little um little bags as opposed to just the plain um, seed packet so that way you don't have to worry about um, when you open up your bag the seed packet that you're going to lose some of your seeds so now vegetable seeds are notorious for getting stuck in the corners so make sure you kind of tap and get all your seeds out Sometimes they can not want to come out. There we go. Okay. I think we got everybody. One fell down to my finger. There we go. Excellent. Next on the list, we have Garden Gem Tomato. Um, garden Gems are considered a snack size tomato. 
Um, really delicious flavor. I mean, if you're gonna have a tomato, it might as well taste good, right? Um, and the little gems absolutely do fantastic, do really well. Of course, you know, all these are the hot weather um, vegetables, so you're not gonna wanna plant them in your garden until you know that any kind of threat of frost or freeze has completely passed because if you transplant them before that a frost freeze will absolutely zap it and then all your hard work has gone down the tubes and we do not want that our final tomato of the day is garden treasure um, this is just a fantastic tomato. I think this might be Jerry's favorite tomato from the Proven Winners line. Um, just a, a wonderful tasting. I just can't talk about how delicious they are because, again, I am a bit of a tomato snob. If it doesn't taste good, why waste it? You know, this is why I refuse to buy tomatoes in the grocery store in January. They just, mm, it's not the same. Um, so these are delicious. They can handle the heat. They just keep performing all season long. Um, pretty good disease resistance. Um, the only issue that I had with my um, tomato plants um, from Proven Winners, but it's just like every other tomato plant that I have, is I have to watch out for that tomato hornworm, which is just, whew, man, if you come out in one morning and all of a sudden your tomato plant is just like been stripped, it very much could be a tomato hornworm. They're very um, common where we are. I think probably most places have tomato hornworms. They're a big, huge, fat, green um, worm, very camouflaged. So the best way to, <laughs> sounds gross, but you'll notice that your leaves are just gone. You'll have the stalks, but no leaves. And odds are you'll have little black pellets on the leaves below. That's their poop. So what I do is I find the poop and then I look up and they can be anywhere and they are extremely hard to find because they are so camouflaged. But I promise you, they are there. So they're big, fat worms and they have like a horn, not really a horn, on the back of their head. They also like, crazy enough, um, super bells. So they'll get on super bells too, so watch that. So that's just a little free tip of the day. Next, we have Pesto Besto. Now I have not tried Pesto Besto. I am a huge fan of a Mazel Basil, but the Pesto Besto is their seed pesto, uh, seed basil rather, that makes great pesto. Um, now on these, we're gonna plant them a fourth of an inch deep and they have a completely different looking um, type of seed, obviously, than a tomato or anything else. They're little tiny little black specks. Um, basil, of course, is just such a, I think if there's one herb synonymous with summer, for me at least, it would be basil. It is just, oh my gosh, it is like summertime in a plant. You don't even have to like eat it. You can just go by and just brush your hand against it and it just has that beautiful perfume smell. I got one stuck in there. Come on, baby. All right, I got it. All right, so there are little teeny tiny black seeds. There's my tag, get that. Just sprinkle them in here, easy peasy. These are little tiny little things. So as soon as they hit the soil, man, they basically just kind of disappear. So just trust that you're putting them in the hole. And then we're gonna come back and tap them in. Now, while you're waiting for your seeds to germinate, um, I really recommend that um, if you have a heat mat, a seedling heat mat, it makes things go really fast, um, a lot faster, and you can set the temperature on that. You wanna make sure that you have a thermostat so that you can control your temperature. I have made the mistake before of not having a thermostat on there, and I have cooked and fried my little seedlings, which was not fun at all. So um, a heat mat with a thermostat is fantastic. You can check out the one that I use. It's in our, um, on our Amazon store. It'll be linked um, in the video description, so you can check those out. It's just what we use, nice and easy. Um, 
and then you're going to want to keep them evenly moist. So I have just a little small spray bottle so that the top doesn't get completely dried out. We already started with moist soil, but the top is going to dry out first. So you can just go and just give them a nice fine mist once a day if you need it. And then because this is the clear plastic top, I have two of them. You can take one off and put it on top or you can even use saran wrap and just lay it on top. That will help um, bring, keep the heat in and keep the moisture in from um, evaporating too quickly. So those are some little tips. And then if you have the grow lights, man, um, those just stay on and the plants just get so happy and very, very excited. Now, speaking of exciting, our last one is Buried Treasure White Strawberry. Strawberries are gonna be, I have never done strawberries before, so this is gonna be a little test for me too. Um, proven winners, when they send them to you, they tell you that it is best to go ahead and put them in an airtight container in your refrigerator for three to four weeks. So I have done that. They have been pre-chilled for three to four weeks and um, their seeds are very, very tiny. And in order for um, these to germinate, they need light. So they're gonna go right on the surface. I did remember kind of break everything up, um, but I'm not gonna come back and tap them in. I'm just gonna make sure that this is nice and kind of loose so that they can have something to grab onto. And again, in order to conserve some moisture, you can use those methods that I just talked about, um, and that will be really helpful. So uh, here we go. There are certain seeds out there that if you sneeze, you'll just blow them all away. And the strawberry ones are very much like that. So don't do this in a high wind situation or when you have a tickly nose because you just might lose your seeds. I try to spread them out in the pot, but sometimes they're just so tiny that um, they fall where they fall, right? Okay. So these need light to germinate. So I am, I'm not, I'm not burying them. I'm just kind of tapping them down so that they don't blow from the garden boxes till I get them inside. So I'm not burying them. I'm just kind of securing them and settling them down. Um, Cause of course the wind is going to start picking up here in just a second. All right. So what I'll do is I will just simply take these sweet things, go stick them inside underneath the grow lights, and then I just wait. Of course, like I said, keep the top damp, not soaking wet. You want it just moist until they germinate, and then you can kind of gauge it from there. I will keep you updated, obviously, on how these sweet things are doing. But get out there get some vegetable seeds again you can order all of this from proven winners online they will send it to you lickety split and that way you can have some fantastic delicious homegrown vegetables and fruit in your garden this season as always thank y'all so much for gardening with creekside y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends